Reading from Proverbs. Wisdom's cry out, wisdom cries out in the street. In the square, she raises her voice. At the busiest corner, she cries out. At the entrance of the city gates, she speaks. How long, O oh simple ones, will you love being simple? How long will scoffers delight in their scoffing, and fools hate knowledge? Give heed to my reproof. I will pour out my thoughts to you. I will make my words known to you, because I have called and you have refused, have stretched out my hand and no one heeded. And because you have ignored all my counsel and would have none of my reproof, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when panic strikes you, when panic strikes you like a storm, and your calamity comes like a whirlwind, when distress anguish come upon you. Then they will call upon me, but I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but will not find me, because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord, but have none of my counsel, and despised all my reproof. Therefore they shall eat the fruit of their way, and be sated with their own devices. For waywardness kills the simple, and the complacency of fools destroys them. But those who listen to me will be secure and will live at ease without dread of disaster. The word of the Lord. We will read the psalm in unison. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his hand. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes 
from James. Not many of you should become teachers, my brethren and sisters, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes in speaking is perfect, able to keep the whole body in check with a bridle. If we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we guide their whole bodies. Or look at ships, though they are so large that it takes strong winds to drive them, yet they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member yet it boasts of great exploits. How great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire, and the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed among our members as a world of iniquity. It stains the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature, and is itself set on fire by hell. For every species of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species. But no one could tame the tongue, a restless evil full of deadly poison. With it we bless the Lord and Father, and with it we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and brackish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives, or a grapevine figs? No more can salt water yield fresh. The word of the Lord. Thanks.
May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts always be acceptable in your sight, dear Jesus. Amen. Our lesson today from the Gospel is a hard one. And let me just tell you, clergy, at least in the Episcopal Church, or anyone, any clergy that follow the Revised Common Lectionary, at this time of year to hear that we have to die for Jesus during stewardship time, that is a hard sell. And so please don't be frightened off by this lesson. But in fact, it is stewardship time. And so we will talk a bit about that. So, you know, yesterday, Michael and I were in Sandbridge and I'm so grateful for um, Mother Carolyn, who was here with you last week, and I'm also grateful for all of the emails that I saw going back and forth about the e outreach that you are doing in our community. And I want to thank you for that, because you are making a difference. And I'm not sure if I've mentioned to you that somebody brought in a bag of John's Memorial History, and it has records and pictures of former clergy and things that activities the church was involved with and in many ways we are doing the same things that congregations were doing in 1885 when they came into this parish that it was that people were drawing together in word and sacrament and that's a good thing but something that's different this year and something I was reminded of this week as I sat on the beach I was talking with a colleague across the country, and we were talking about how different our ministries have become. That none of us went to seminary to, and learned anything about technology. None of us learned anything about administration. They don't teach those things. None of us learned about cameras and angles and how to do that. But those are the things that we're dealing with. And as I talk with this other priest who's out in South Dakota on an Indian reservation, we're just talking about the, the way, the, the broad expanse of our faith that we can share the good news of Jesus Christ in ways that we couldn't do before that there are people that are listening to this this morning in other parts of the country. And we are so glad that they are with us. And as the bishop has pointed out, and I've mentioned to you before, this, this approach and um, continued work with videotaping services, it's going to go on. It will continue because we are reaching more people. And with our reach, it's causing us to stretch. And we are going to be, we're looking at a new camera, we're looking at new lighting, we're looking at ways we can improve our technology so we can reach more people. And that's a good thing. That is a very good thing because that is what we're called to do. And that's the same thing that the early believers, those who started John's Memorial, believed that they were called to serve. And you know, I was thinking about what was it like for folks when they went through World War I or World War II or the pandemic and this now pandemic. What was it like? How did they get through that time? And I think they got, they got through it because they stayed together. They stayed together. And that's what you have done. You have faithfully stayed together. And as we go forward, now we have all got to reach a little deeper. If we are going to continue to expand our ministries, Last year, we made a decision, and I will stand by this <laughs> decision um, for the rest of my life, that we increased salaries. And when the, you'll get a spirit, you'll get a stewardship letter this week, and it will mention that there has been increases in salaries, and there have been increases across the board. But when we did our evaluations, I didn't realize that October 1, 
Peggy will have been here 25 years. We're not sure we have to go back in our records, but we think that Chris has been here about 17. just mentioned that Chris and uh, Brian were involved in a service yesterday, a 9-11 service at um, Longwood, and you can see that online. And I mention that because we are blessed with the quality of music we have. We are blessed with the technology. But this year is going to be a tight stewardship year. It is going to be a tight stewardship year. And I am asking you all to dig deep, to think prayerfully, and I'm asking those who are watching from their home, whether in this part of the country or wherever you are, to consider making a commitment to John's memorial. It is important to support our staff, and it is important, and we are called to share the gospel. So, as I mentioned to Chris and Peggy this morning, I don't think things are going to get necessarily any easier for us in how we're doing our ministry. I think there are going to be some more challenges, some more opportunities for growth. And you know, it's true. Jesus loves us just the way we are, but Jesus doesn't want us to stay the way we are for eternity called to grow and when we reach within ourselves and ask Jesus to guide us and as we heard in the gospel Jesus was walking with the disciples and if you look back through Mark throughout it Jesus is walking with the disciples he's walking he's teaching he's healing and he is here with us today and he is here with you today and you can count on it one of my colleagues said, you know, there's some people that she had heard from that watch services that never hear that God loves them. And I want to say that loud and clear today. God loves you. God loves you. And I'd like for you to each look at someone around you and say, God loves you. God loves you. Please, let's do it again. Let's share the good news. God loves you. God loves you, and wherever you are in your spiritual journey, you are not alone. This morning, I pur purposely wore this stole because this goose is a symbol of the Holy Spirit and community. We cannot do what we do as individuals. What we do, we do as a community. And so I thank you for being a part of this community, and I look forward to the growth and the continued movement of our congregation. Amen.
God calls us today to be open to the Word and to one another. Let us open ourselves to all the world in prayer, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the church we pray, that we may bring God's Word of life to all in silence, darkness, and despair. Let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For our congregation we pray, that we may grow into the mystery of God's life among and in us. Let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the world we pray, that nations will come to cooperate for the health and well-being of all. Let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For our community we pray, that hospitals and nursing homes may be equipped to deal with our sick and dying, Pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, Lord, have mercy. For all in the healing professions, we pray, that those who search for cures and those who attend the sick may be strengthened for their tasks. Let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, Lord, have mercy. For the sick and dying, we pray, that Richard, Jennifer, David, Bill, Geraldine, Mary Jo, Marshall, Thomas, Caitlin, Gwen, Chester, Jennifer, Mike, Rick, Kim, Trina, Jill, Caroline, John, Richard, Barbara, Adam, Nancy, Kevin, Stephanie, Dave, Don, Jonathan, Lynn, George, Ruth, Susan, Chuck, Sean, Don, Deborah, Bev, Alice, Alicia, and Yannick. And all who have asked for our prayers may know the healing power of God and that those who have died, especially Baxter Carter and Charles Brooks, may not die alone. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have Lord have mercy. Mercy. For all mourners we pray that all who grieve the coming of death may come to know life in the mercy of God. Let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. Into your mercy, O God, we commend you all the needy world, trusting in your almighty power, in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, guide the nations of the world in the way of justice and truth, and establish a month now that he is the fruit of righteousness, that they may be. Eternal God, ever eternal ever. 
Thank you for my birthday, and I got it a week ago today, so thank you, Bob. I appreciate it. So. This is the ministry moment during the stewardship campaign. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I am not Carl Long. I'll explain why I have to say that up front, but first I have to drop back a little more than four decades. And remember when Ann and I were first coming to Jobs, we had our small children and we took them to the nursery and sometimes we kept them. Uh, and I thought we had there the basic things uh, that uh, served. We had uh, toy uh, cars and trucks. We had uh, books with Bible stories. We had uh, blocks and dogs. But it occurred to me one day, having been drafted into kitchen duty in my marriage, that is, having to go to the grocery store, cook and clean up, something I assure you my father, Lewis, never had to do, that maybe it would be okay to have in the nursery a little model stove with utensils and maybe a, a kind of kitchen sink for the boys and girls. So there was no Walmart. I decided I will make them. And I had in my mind's eye the sort of thing my grandfather, who immigrated from Sweden in around 1900, would make. He made uh, custom designed and built furniture that was absolutely beautiful. Every scene was straight and essentially invisible. All the corners were square. The finish glowed. That is not what I made. <laughs> Uh, the corners weren't square and there were gaps along the seams and uh, I did what I could to um, to hide those flaws with wood putty and paint and my wife graciously pointed out more flaws and so I did the best I could uh, and I brought it to the nursery and the kids including ours uh, played with it and, and so I contributed but then I did something else that the Reverend Nancy told us to do two weeks ago in her sermon and reminded us again. Think about how we can grow in our service to John's memorial. What are our talents and our treasures that can make the life of the parish better? And so I moved on from making things with wood to making them with words. And uh, I'm not Carl Dunn. He was my grandfather. <laughs> Sorry. I'm Michael Lund, and I thank you for listening. <laughs> Yeah. 